simple triads, a single chord outside of the key signature, syncopated accents, and layers that bring out this mystical major 7 minor 9 sound. Let's look at each of these elements and see what makes this quarantine session sound far from dull. This chord progression is longer than your average loop, 14 bars to be exact. So let's focus on how I play the chords first. Each voicing is exactly the same, one, five, three. If you don't know your intervals, the easiest place to start is a power chord. The definition of a power chord is literally a fifth. So this right here, one and five, is a fifth. So here's our shape, and our right hand pattern is pretty simple. If you want to play along with interactive tabs, the link is below. It's completely free. Just click it, and it'll take you straight to the tab. Now after hearing just the guitar chords, you might be thinking, man, it doesn't sound nearly as exciting as when Tom Misch plays it. But hold on, there's layers of violin that come in before the guitar that bring out these major 7 and minor 9 feels. For instance, the first loop in the violin starts with an F sharp. And if you take a G chord and place an F sharp right on top of it, it's going to give it a major 7 sound. The very first loop establishes a unique feel. It starts with an accent on the upbeat of 4. So from the very beginning, the listener is deceived as to where the downbeat is. One violin plays this. And the other plays this. And if you thought eighth notes were easy, this loop will make you rethink that. As musicians, we're conditioned to accent on the downbeat. But here, this loop starts an eighth note early, so the accent and the beginning of the loop starts an eighth note before the downbeat, making it feel quite tricky. Time to solo. We're in the key of D major. If you want to know how I figured that out, check out this video right here. So D major or D major pentatonic work great over this except for this one little chord. And if I know all the diatonic chords in the key of D major, I'll see that this E major chord does not fit in there and I know that a single note is going to clash. If I compare the notes to the D major scale to just the E major chord, I'll see there's just one note difference as G to G sharp. So technically I could play the full D major scale. As long as I change that G to a G sharp, it's going to sound great with that E major chord. Okay, so let's take this one step further and look at the notes in the D major pentatonic scale. There's no G, no G sharp, not a single note that would clash with our E major chord. So when I hit that E major chord, as long as I stay with just the D major pentatonic, it's going to sound great. And if I want to really highlight that E major chord, I'll land on that G sharp. And just for some extra inspiration, here's five licks that Mish plays in this session. Free interactive tabs are available for this video in the link below. If you like this feature, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Interactive tabs are available exclusively for my Patreon supporters in all future lessons, including exclusive lessons and jam tracks as well. And if you want a quick comprehensive guide on Neo Soul Guitar, check out my Neo Soul Guitar Starter eBook. It's a 32 page book divided into seven different jam scenarios with chord moves and solo approaches. So if you're ever feeling stuck, any page in the book will offer some inspiration. So keep jamming and stay nasty. Thank you.